So we have this API that's already online and we want to retrieve some information. Now I just want, I don't want to leave this topic without showing you how to use the JSON data that you receive from these APIs. So usually an API will give you JSON data. So once you learn just how to handle JSON, you should be good to go. So if I run the script here, what I will get is JSON. So let's see how we can utilize this JSON on our own page. Okay, so back to our content. Uh, let's forget about our own API for now. Let's go to the request page here and see what we can do. And now I want to get rid of all this here because we really don't need it. We don't need this uh, object headers and all that. We can make a perfectly good request without them. So what I want to do here is to retrieve the information and instead of just displaying it as it is, I want to format it so that it looks like actual uh, useful information, right? So let me bring back the URL. I want to get some comments. So let's say posts, so is it comments slash, actually post seven like that slash comments so that I get comments, all the comments from that post number. So back here, if I refresh and try to fetch, it's going to, okay, there we go. So we have a list of these comments, right? So how do we parse this data so that we get specific information that we want? Well, we convert it to JSON. Now to convert it to JSON, you can do it in two ways. Here in the response, I can um, change that to JSON. So let me do JSON like so, okay? And then once I come back here, I will have JSON data. So which means it will be an object so you see, instead of getting the text, I'm getting object, 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 because what's happening here is that JavaScript is sending an actual object to the HTML. Uh, it's converting the object to text. And so it can do that. It cannot do that. So it's just saying object. So if you see that, then that's, that's your issue right there. You have to loop through the object to get actual data inside. So you don't have to do things here. If you want to actually see what you got before you convert it to JSON, just leave it at text. And then when you get here, you will have to parse it as text. So you can say JS to parse it as JSON. So I'll say JSON dot parse. So now when you are converting an object to a string, you use stringify, but when you are converting a string, to JSON use dot parse. So there we go, parse. And we will have the same problem like what we are having here. So if I try to fetch, I get object, 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 even though this is text, that's because I converted it to an object here. So either way is fine. I prefer putting text there instead. So let me leave it at that. Now, instead of having this, Let's convert it to an object and then let's have another function here that will run once we do that. So let's call the function uh, display data so that we can display this data in a more civilized manner. So this is our function here, display data. Now I want to design a um, some HTML that will help with the display. So let's add some HTML, shall we? So if I now try to fetch some normal data, I want to see what I need. So there's name, there's email, there's body, and there's ID. Okay, so let's design something that will work with that. So I'm going to say div here. I'll give this div a class of comment, and then I will, let's see what we can do here. Let's try H4 and email at email.com that's a placeholder and then here let's do a um i don't know let's use a spun 20 first gen 2021 let me put a break tag over here 
like so. And then let's add a div. Let's move that div up here because we're going to float it. So div, let's just put a number there. This will represent the comment ID. And then finally, let's put a paragraph of the actual comment. So let me get one of these comments here since we already have it. That way we see the real comment. So paste there, nice. And then finally, let's add this show the name because we have name. I'll use a block quote here and just do that. Say uh, John Smith or something. Okay, we save that. And if I come back here now and refresh the page, this is what we have. Uh, this monstrosity right here. Okay, so let's convert this to, into something that looks more like a government, shall we? So I will put my styles here for a second. And let's do class comment and comment. We'll have, let's say, uh, let's put a width there of 100%. And then let's say max width uh, 400 pixels. Let's give it a uh, box shadow so we can actually see it. Box shadow, zero pixels, zero pixel left, right. Uh, feathering of 10 pixels and uh, let's put a very light gray my favorite gray there and let's add some padding of 1m 1m that isn't padding now is it no okay there we go so padding 1m uh what else margin 1m so it's not so close to the edge and uh Okay, so font family as well. Let's change that. Um, Verdana, maybe Tahoma. Tahoma. And then uh, font size. Let's try 14, maybe 16 pixels. Yeah, that should do. So let's refresh. Okay, something uh, more appealing. Now let's uh, improve on these things in one of these things okay so this div right here let's change that so I'm going to duplicate this comment thing and just change to div so we are doing the div so I'm going to tell the div to float to the right and I'll say font size now nah, let's try 30 pixels yeah something like that 30 pixels and then um color gray um, that's weird gray yellow okay gray what else uh, i think that should do then let's try something else here again oops sorry about that duplicate okay so what else can we look at here the block quote itself so block quote, let's try font weight, bold. Really? Bold? And then font itself, font size, let's try 13 pixels. And yeah, that should work. Let's try, uh, what else do we try here? The email. Let's see what we are doing. Okay, so we have a one there, nice. John Smith. Actually, I like Verdana a bit better. Verdana. Hmm. Not so happy either. Okay, so let's remove this brick tag. It's adding too much space there. So there we go. Much better. Okay, so the span here, let me do that and then we call it a day. So span, and then let's come back here and say uh, font size, uh, 20 pixels, color gray as well. Okay. Very nice. And uh, where is the email? 
let's try h5 to make it smaller a bit too big okay as you can see my uh, designing skills are terrible let's try and reduce this to 14 pixels okay and also let's increase this to 600 pixels okay something like this all right so we're going to pretend this is a comment section of some kind okay let's just pretend and then let's put a div here let's say uh, div this is where bootstrap comes into very handy because I would have done this very quickly with bootstrap but I'm still learning bootstrap so bear with me now here uh, div uh, let's add a few styles here. So the style here will be width, sorry, 100% please. And then uh, max width will be, let's try uh, 700 pixels, even just 600 pixels here. And then margin auto. Okay, so this will do for now refresh okay so I want to load all that information in here so to do that um, what I would need to do is since I have where is this here okay so I have that which I need to get the information to this is the output right here so what I will do is move these babies down here after the styling and then I will get this div and put it inside this one like so because that's where we're going to send the data like that so the data will be here I want this to be the output the outward one and then I'll get all this comment section and come down here to display data so we're going to loop through the data and now the data comes in as let's see it for a second here let's fetch so it comes in as square brackets on the outside which means it's an array so this is an array of objects because this one has curly brackets so that's an object so object and then the outward one is an array so we can loop through the array using a for loop looping through an object is a bit different you do something like this a for var key in your object there something like that that's how you look through the object to get the keys as well so let's try a for loop instead and loop through data that's the data that we have and then i'm just going to say um, var obj is equal to that so that instead of typing this i have to just write obj it's much easier to deal with so here i'm just going to paste my html like so and then I will use, because in JavaScript, if I use single quotes like this, it's going to cause an error, as you can see here. So instead, let's use the back tick like that and do that. Okay, so let's move these babies inward like that. And then let's get the output to display this information. So output here, I have to actually uh, get this part right there because I still need to capture it. This is a different function, so I still need to get it. Paste like that. So here I'll empty it like so. And then back here, I'm going to copy, put it there. And then put plus equals like that. And then I will let the back ticks do the rest. Okay. So in here, we can use that object to get individual parts of this. So here, for example, uh, if I do, I put my dollar sign like that, it becomes a variable. Okay, so obj.id, because I want to put the id, which is there, right there, the id of the comment, and then I want to get the name, email, and finally, the body. So I'm just going to copy everything here, and wait, do we have date at all? No, we don't have date, actually. So I have no idea what to do with that. So let me just remove it. So here we have name. Let me put name there. 
and then here we have the body itself let me put the email first let's just say email and then finally we change the body okay oopsie there we go okay so body is like so goody 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 now let's refresh the page and let's uh fetch Ooh, look what we got so we got that instead hmm wait a minute wait a minute something looks weird yeah that's because we didn't tell it to run this display data function hmm so here we have to tell it that so let me mute this one and instead of it just displaying the data let it display it over there now remember that we are sending it as text so we must do the json parse here like so json dot parse if you don't want the hassle of doing the dot parse here just do it change that to json okay good and good so refresh and fetch data so now as you can see we have a list of comments like this from our api mm -hmm. terrible as they look but i think you get the idea here how you can use that information so we can change which comments we want to get let's get comments from post number three and if i refresh fetch loading loading hmm okay there we go finally so here we have uh yeah from 11 12 13 so i put these numbers here so we can see that these are different comments each time and that's the thing so if you want to add next page previous page and all that you just add a link uh, that will change when you click on the button you change the link here uh depending on the number the page number here right it can be a very simple thing you can do something like uh, let's see let me do something really quick so i'm just going to say um wait here i'll put a variable here for page number so I'll say var uh, page is equal to one let's do that so we are starting with one and then we'll add just a few buttons here maybe under this right let me put a button and cause this one the previous and then i will add another button let me put a spacer there and this button will be next very easy peasy and then uh, let's add some on click listeners here so on click we just say next like that and then uh on click here oh that's the wrong place actually so on click here will be next next should be this way and then this one will be priv like so yes so all we have to do is just tell it that uh, the link should have this page number right here okay so instead of all this we're just going to go out of the and put some pluses there and put our page that way whatever the page number is it's going to be added to the link there right therefore changing the information that we can get so all i need to do now with these functions is create the function next and function previous so I'll just say function next like so and then go down here and say function breathe like so and then in here all i have to do is say page plus equals one uh yeah so that should be minus but uh, let me just copy that and put it here so that is the plus this is the minus so usually the problem is with the minus you don't want to go to page uh, minus one right so we just say if page is less than one then let's just say page is equal to one that's where we make sure that page is always at least one like that okay okay so goody 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 all we have to do now is click some buttons and actually once we click next here we have to run the get data here that way we get our data 
immediately. So let me put that here, get data as well there. Okay, great. So now let me refresh and we have next and previous pages. So let me just click next. There you see, we start with 11 to 15. Let me click next. Wow, it's, it's not changing at all. Let's try previous, nothing. Okay, so not good at all. Wait a minute, are these things changing in any way? Uh, let me click next. No, they aren't. So let's go to our console. I was a bit slow there in catching up, right? Let's go to our console here and see what's going on. So get data, page plus, page plus one. So this looks like it should actually work. And the reason it isn't working is uh, because I'm, oh, I'm a bit slow. So I added this to the wrong function. So I should add this here instead. Sorry, my bad. I forgot we had a second function that we absolutely do not need. So let me remove this real quick there. Okay, that's much cleaner. Okay, so the mix up should go now. Let me refresh my page and close this. So first of all, let's fetch the data. So we are starting with one and then let's go next. Loading, more data, nice, next more data next loading more data you get the idea so if i go back here i go back to these guys like so there i go to those guys and there we go okay so hopefully you have learned something and i hope this wasn't being uh wasn't too long and boring in the next video we're going to start creating our very own api so that others can connect to it and interact with it